Hello, hello, hello. What's happening, YouTube? Sergeant Phasma here. Today I've got a Moab on terminal with the MK14 silence going 49 to 1. Um, pretty much trying to keep the enemy team trapped at A flag whilst holding B and C. Um, quite a good gameplay. Wouldn't say the opponents were the best opponents, so that made it a bit easier. But still a good gameplay nonetheless, 49 kill death ratio. What I'm going to be doing today though, I'm not actually going to be commentating on the game itself. I'm going to be reading a chapter of my book, as you saw in the advert at the beginning. I've got a combat guide published on Amazon, and today I'll be reading you a chapter of that. The chapter is number three, and it's titled Wet Work. Wet Work's basically a CIA word for killing, so here we go. Wet Work. There are many different objectives in FPS games, but no matter which one it may be, killing the enemy is always a necessity. Wet work is the phrase used by the CIA, basically meaning killing. Whether or not kills are the objective of a game, a victory depends on being able to stop the enemy before they stop you. There are often many ways to kill an enemy in FPS games, some more efficient and less risky than others. Some methods require more strategy and skill to execute. An iconic hitman once said, the rifle is the first weapon you learn how to use because it lets you keep your distance from the client. The closer you get to being a pro, the closer you get to the client. The knife, for example, is the last thing you learn. Choosing your strategy of attack wisely is crucial. There is no perfect weapon or strategy. Tactics and weaponry must be chosen in accordance to the purpose. The sniper rifle is in some ways the easiest weapon to learn due to a low amount of pressure on the sniper. Sniping is the act of firing precise single shots from covered vantage points at distant targets. The ammunition is usually of high calibre, providing very high stopping power, and snipers are trained to fire at vital organs for the greatest chance of a one-shot kill. Due to low fire rates and the large size of sniper rifles, they're not efficient in close quarters. This means that there may be less pressure on a sniper from distance, but when caught off guard by an enemy in close proximity, the sniper is extremely vulnerable. The automatic assault, assault rifle is the most general, general purpose weapon available, most commonly firing the 5.56mm standard NATO round full metal jacket FMJ, or the larger 7.62mm and offering a balance between a high rate of fire, the stopping power of high velocity rounds, high accuracy due to the decent barrel length, plus the effective kill range of rifle ammo high magazine capacity and a fairly compact size and weight capable of operating in most environments there are. Though the assault rifle can do everything, it does not do particularly does not particularly specialise in anything. The light machine gun is the ideal weapon for laying down high volumes of automatic fire on single or multiple targets. Classed as a support weapon due to its high magazine capacity due to its high magazine and ability to carry out sustained cover fire, enabling assault teams to get closer to the enemy. This type of firing is often used to keep the enemy's heads down while the rest of the team move to a more tactical position surrounding the enemy. As a support weapon, they are perfect, with high stopping power, rate of fire and magazine capacity, but as an assault weapon, they are inefficient due to large, large size and very high weight. In close quarters battle, CQB, the submachine gun is the number one choice coming in a small package and firing pistol bullets at a high automatic rate, fire rate. With fairly high accuracy and stability in the form of shoulder stocks and foregrips, as well as low recoil, the SMG is the best all-round weapon for going toe-to-toe -to -toe in tight urban environments. Though the bullets are low velocity pistol rounds, usually 9mm, lacking the stopping power of rifles, the high rate of fire and low recoil results in a higher number of hits on the target. It may not pack the most punch, but it sure packs the most punches. Another weapon suited to close quarters is the 12 gauge shotgun. Unlike the SMG, the shotgun is purely limited to close quarters and due to the ammo most commonly used, it becomes unpractical beyond ranges of 10 to 20 meters. What it does offer the user is great stopping power within its effective range. The most common 12 gauge shells firing more than 400 lead pellets, resulting in a high rate of impact on the target. A shotgun must be used with greater tactical awareness than most weapons though. 
the rate of fire is limited. And though they're a full automatic, firing at low rates of fire, variants, the majority are semi-automatic or even pump action, which require the firer to cock the weapon after each shot. Though the power of each shot is high, less fire can be laid down per second than other weapons, so the user must fire accurately, because a second shot may not be possible. Due to limited range, the shotgun user must move at speed in a way that keeps them safe and covered from shooters beyond shotgun range and makes them fast and deadly against close range enemies. The element of surprise is crucial to the use of shotguns. Many FPS games allow the use of a knife or some other sort of melee attack in hand to hand encounters. This generally requires the greatest use effectively. Speed and the element of surprise are a must because without these, running at a shooter whilst carrying blade will usually result in failure. They say you shouldn't take a knife to a gunfight, I say not unless you take your brain. Killing with a blade requires stealth and the most tactical movement to prevent alerting your target and give you the positional advantage to carry out your attack. Attacking from behind provides the least risk. There are also forms of traps such as planted explosive devices. Knowing your device is crucial. C4 plastic explosives, killed with an explosive blast, should be placed as close to the target as possible. The Claymore Mine is an anti-personnel device that kills with projectiles. It fires roughly 700 ball bearings forward in a 60 degree arc, so the device must be placed facing the enemy in a way where it will detonate with the enemy when the enemy is in the centre of the fire. Sorry. The claymore can be detonated by different methods. A laser trip sensor claymore should be placed in a way where the laser is tripped when the enemy first enters the arc, so the device detonates when the enemy is dead center. Regardless of the weapon, the basic objective is the same. Kill as quickly and as easily as possible. I'll break it down into three stages. Acquire, engage, eliminate. Acquire your target. First things first, you have to find your target. The greater your movement, the more likely you are to spot them before they spot you. Be aware of all possible attack and ambush points as you move. Keeping moving is important as you don't want to be acquired by an enemy coming up the rear. The target's threat must also be calculated. What weapons type are they carrying? This will determine whether you are in immediate danger. Have they seen you yet? You may have more time to carry out an attack or even choose to take them down with a stealth kill so as not to alert any other nearby enemies. What cover do they have and what cover can you use? There will normally be some object that can provide either protective or just visible cover from your enemy. Some games have bullet penetration systems, but even if the surface, surface you're covered by can be penetrated, it will still add one more difficulty for your opponent. Engage your target. If you have not been spotted after acquiring your target, engage them and eliminate them in your chosen way. If you both spot each other, there is a moment between the acknowledgement and the attack. I call this the moment of notice. The key is to constantly be prepared for this and shorten the moment. Generally, the first to launch an attack will be the victor, but this is not always the case. Once this moment has occurred, you must engage your opponent. Engaging may mean firing at the enemy, but basically means beginning a firefight. Whether that's attacking or taking cover to safely launch an attack, you must take into account your enemy's position and adapt accordingly. In FPS games, a player cannot aim their weapon in a different direction than they are facing. This gives you the advantage of knowing when you are in their sights and how to get out. As well as shooting at them, some evasive movement must be taken to reduce your chances of being hit. Strafing out of the enemy's line of sight is effective, as well as crouching or laying down prone. Both of which reduce your visible target size and make it harder to hit you, as well as provide more stability for accurate shooting. Taking cover whilst laying down some fire is also an option. Eliminate your target. You can only eliminate an enemy if you're alive, so be aware of your health. Once you've chosen your method of engaging and elim eliminating, execute it and survive. Shooting randomly at the enemy will achieve a kill, but it's a great deal more effective to fire precisely. To efficiently kill a person, basic knowledge of anatomy is helpful. Enough traumas to limbs and flesh can cause death through blood loss and shock, but to guarantee a kill, you must target the body's vital organs. Targeting the torso, or more specifically centre mass, aiming for the heart, deals the greatest chance of a kill with body shots. The brain is obviously the most vital organ, so a headshot provides the highest likelihood of an instant kill, but due to the smaller size of the head, 
aiming for the head has a higher chance of failure, especially on a moving target. A great deal of assassins aim for the heart, but this is sometimes due to the damage that headshots do, which makes proving the identification of the mark difficult. You may think that human anatomy is irrelevant in an FPS game, but it's very relevant. In-game bodies have damage multipliers, bullets and weapons will deal different damage scores, but on top of this, different areas of the body such as the torso and head will multiply the damage dealt accordingly. So that's chapter 3, work work. Um, if you like what you've heard, then feel free to purchase the book. There's about 20, maybe, maybe 21 chapters, and each is filled with valuable information both from real life and first person shooters so I think you'll really enjoy it you'll learn a lot from it hopefully you learn something from that one chapter there that's chapter 3 so that's basically the basics so you might think oh, I know all that but of course you do as the book goes along it goes into more detail about specific play styles team objectives solo objectives and whatnot. so thanks for watching guys Hope you've enjoyed this video and the book and any support would be greatly appreciated so check out the book on amazon.com or .co.uk just search fps academy cheers guys take care